All right, hey guys, we're on uh, day three. So uh, we are on page 31 and we've done a lot of F naturals and now C naturals on the G string. We already did C natural on the A string, so we're a little bit ahead. Um, also, there's going to be a G natural on the E string, uh, which is gonna be our second finger on the E string. So just keep an eye on, on those things coming up on this, this little snippet of a couple of lines. So we're gonna do uh, Ode to Joy, number 124. Um, but I wanna give you a heads up. The way it's written is not how it really sounds. And so we're gonna actually change it. Um, so I'm gonna play for you how it's written and then play for you how it's supposed to go and then be like, oh yeah, that sounds better. So here's how it's written. <laughs> first ending and the second ending, it'll sound like this, and then be like, oh, that's how it's supposed to go. So what you're going to do, I'll see if I can show you on the video screen. What I'll probably do is just take a picture and upload it, because I don't know if the screen will show you um, what I've done. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to add a dot on the first quarter note. We're in the first ending. Add a dot and the first quarter note and then add a flag on the second quarter note. And do the same thing for the second ending. Add a dot on the first quarter note and a flag on the second quarter note in the second ending. So what that does is it makes the first note, a dotted quarter note, gets one and a half beats. We've done a little bit of that um, in class with other things. Um, not, but they haven't taught it in this book yet, and that's why uh, they're like, wait, whoa, you don't know that. But you do know that. You know how the song goes. Uh, so it's actually a dotted quarter note, which is going to get three eighth notes worth. So it's one and a half beats, and then an eighth note by itself. So think of it as a three to one ratio. So one, two, three, one. Um, plus, you know the song, so you'll probably be able to figure it out really quickly. Um, interesting fact that the, um, the, the Germans love this song so much, revere it so much, that when it's performed, this is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, when that symphony is performed, in particular this movement, which is the last movement, the finale, um, everybody stands as if it's the national anthem. They have such respect for Beethoven and their heritage um, that they stand as if it's their national anthem. So it's like a secondary national anthem. I think that's really really quite impressive and cool. So when you play this one, play it with a little bit more pride. And because uh, uh, there are people that truly just respect Beethoven so much that it, his music has become part of their history and culture. So certainly in the Western world, we, we definitely know who Beethoven is because um, he's definitely written a ton of music that we all love. All right, so um, let's go ahead and play Ode to Joy. You'll notice that you're shifting. Um, we talked about C natural being this tape. Uh, we've used that tape to shift, but now we're gonna use it to play. And uh, we've changed our first and second endings to uh, make it sound how it's supposed to sound. All right, so without further ado, Ode to Joy on the A string. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the note names and then we'll talk about the fingering that they have us uh, shifting to in here because it's a little bit different than what we've done before. All right, so we have G, A, B, C, D, D, C, B, C, D, B, B, G, A, B, C, D, B, C, B, A, F sharp, G, ah. 
So this whole song, we've been, we've been so used to playing the C naturals. You can say C natural if you would like, or you could just say C. They mean the same thing. Um, but when we get to F, we have to say F sharp. It's not an F. It's an F sharp. Um, so remember, that's going to be our four fingers. We learned F sharp way back when. So it's going to be our fourth finger. Um, the shifting that they have, they have us doing this, but they also at some points have us doing this position. This is um, a, a second position-ish. Um, I'll double check with my bass guy, Andy. Um, but you're going to put four on C, and two now becomes B. So one would be on um, a B flat or A sharp. It's kind of in between here. It's in between these two things, right? So uh, you're going to have C and B here. So that just helps you with uh, convenience of getting around. Um, other fingerings you could do would be a one and a two. But this one in this line has you doing this. I don't remember it having you do this this time. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and play 125. If you would like to pizzicato first, remember you can always do that. Or you can press pause and figure it out and then press play when you're ready to play with me. Or rewind and play it again and again and again. Or you can also go on the um, online videos and the tracks and you can practice with those as well. Uh, this is just to show you how to play from here if you have any questions about what to do. Um, I'm really excited about being able to do videos for you, my bass friends, because usually you get overlooked in the cello bass class. And so now this is all about you. So um, I will tell you, I have a new respect for my bass friends um, and you guys in particular, because it's really hard to press down these strings. Um, I've been playing the, the bass lines for all the classes and um, my hands are hurting <laughs> from playing bass. Um, not so much all the violin stuff and viola stuff, although that is a little weird going this way, um, but just playing uh, everything on the bass really been wearing out my fingers. My cello fingers aren't used to it. Okie dokie, without further ado, 125. One, two, three, four. <laughs> tricky so let's go ahead and go through the notes together um, it's tricky because of the the notes the rhythms the slurs all of the things all right so it's gonna go like this C D F E D C E G C B C A G E F G, E, D, C, low G, second finger down here. Repeat, C, D, F, E, D, C, E, G, C, B, C, A, G, E, F, G, E, D, C. So in the first setting, we have that G, it's on the E string. So it's going to be two fingers on the E string. Remember that it's going to be halfway between those stripes. Our second fingers are halfway between the stripes. So we have this pattern here. Uh, we don't have nice, um, even spaces in our fingers. Uh, instead, we have it more like this, so just like on our bow. So make sure your second fingers are landing there. So it's going to be a little sharper or closer to the bridge than if you just played it with even spacings. Um, so just keep that in mind so that you're getting nice and in tune. Um, we don't have tapes here for our second fingers, but something you could do at home if, uh, with your tuner is take a pencil and you can mark on your fingerboard um, a little line where your second finger is in tune. And it's probably gonna be a different, slightly different space on each string because remember your string, your E string is so fat. So it might be in a different place than it would be on the G string, which is a lot skinnier. So. Um, just keep that in mind, but you can take a pencil. If you have a sticker, uh, like a little circle sticker, and you wanted to use that, that's totally okay. Or you could take really thin masking tape. Um, 
the tapes that we use are, um, I call them racing stripes because that's what they are. They're from car parts, audio, uh, auto parts, and um, they are for uh, putting on cars. And so, um, but anyway, so I wouldn't put anything on the wood itself, but across this, you could use a sticker or a tape, or like I said, a pencil will work too. Pencil's great, it does wear off as you play it. Um, it will come off on your fingers and it will wipe away, which is also not a bad thing because then you get used to it and you know where it's supposed to go. So you don't always have to have these tapes. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, we're gonna do Minstrel Boy. Um, I really recommend pizzicatoing it first and then going with the bow. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it with the bow. If you need to practice pizzicato first or you would like to, uh, press pause or you could practice pizzicato while I'm playing with the bow and then rewind and do it again. All right. One, two, three, four. page 31 you'll see that there's a sound check box and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it uh, as a canvas quiz uh, that you'll just rate that you have um, you totally understand what's going on like correct bow division you understand the concept but you're not totally mastering it yet um, or I have no idea what this means so that way I can get feedback from you guys on what I need to uh, address in a separate video maybe that uh, goes back and talks about the different things so that you can uh, practice those and really understand what's going on so you can be the best musician possible on your instrument. All right, I'll see you either Zoom Monday or in the next video. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get through the next video this morning so you'll see me in the same clothes. Bye.